tonight, thousands of homes devastated, many more spared as the Brisbane River peaks below predictions. A promise to overcome the odds, but the pressure and pain tells on the Premier. We are Queenslanders. We're the people that they breed tough north of the border. We're the ones that they knock down and we get up again. The tugboat captain with nerves of steel who saved the Gateway Bridge. And the Bremer River recedes at Ipswich, raw evidence of the flood's destruction. This is 7 News with Rod Young and Kay McGrath. Well, good evening. A Durag man who was sucked into a stormwater drain has become Brisbane's first death from the floods. He's the 15th confirmed death of this emergency. 61 people are still missing. More than 11,000 homes have been damaged in Brisbane alone. And 4,000 Queenslanders are in evacuation centres. Around 120,000 homes remain without power. We'll go straight to Kay McGrath at Kangaroo Point. And Kay, you've been watching a drama unfold right in front of you there. It was incredible, Rod. Just uh, minutes ago, the river dragged one of these yachts behind me right off its anchor, and the skipper was still on board. For a moment, it looked like the vessel would simply float away, as so many have, but all of a sudden, it started to list dangerously and then sink. There was a frantic effort by the owner to save the boat, but uh, he had no hope at all. And then, of course, it became a rescue operation. We think that there were two people on board, but water police and boaties nearby launched rapidly into action. The last that we saw, they were swimming for their lives. Well, Peter Doherty was in the Seven News helicopter. Peter, can you tell us what you could see from up there? OK, uh, look, a complete drama, as you said, in front of you. Then uh, that boat got washed further downstream. We believe those people were saved, thanks to the men on board this uh, Queensland police boat. Uh, they were able to retrieve the men, uh, get them on board. They were also able to uh, restrain a tinny that had sunk, and they towed it for about two kilometres, or they drifted with the Brisbane River. Then. They uh, bailed the water out and put life jackets on those rescued men and they've now left under their own steam uh, further down here near the New Farm Park. So yet again, another dramatic rescue, uh, more lives saved as uh, you know, the River City battles the, the river which is now completely in the city. Kay? Some wonderful work there by our uh, police force and emergency workers. Thanks, Peter Doherty and the Seven News Chopper. Well, that capped a day of drama on the Brisbane River, which peaked early this morning at 4.46 metres. Now, that's below the level of the 74 flood. Just after the peak, a potential disaster was averted. Tugboat captain Doug Hislop stopped a massive piece of the New Farm Riverwalk from slamming into and potentially bringing down the Gateway Bridge. 200 metres long and weighing about 1,000 tonnes, the biggest piece of debris in the Brisbane River. After days of relentless pounding by the surging water, the 800 metre river walk started coming apart last night. Glinting in the lights of cars, it's silent but unstoppable as it races past Breakfast Creek. Now looming in its path, the four pylons and 12 lanes of the twin gateway bridges, Brisbane's biggest river crossing. For the second time in the night, police closed the bridge, fearing the enormous impact could damage or even collapse the twin spans. As the steel and concrete monster approaches Royal Queensland Golf Club, there's nothing to stop it. We need Mavis to save us. Just minutes from impact, tugboat Mavis fights the current to slam the walkway into midstream, darting up and down its length to safely shepherd it through. We just held it on the leads as it came through, pushed one end or the other and just kept it straight. Plowing through the uh, river as hard as it could and it finally got round the outside of it and grabbed hold of it. It was quite amazing the speed they were travelling down the river. So yeah, no, it was a good job by the bloke. He was a brave man. Even under the bridges, her skipper's still correcting its course to save the gateway. Not very difficult. Not very difficult. It's just a matter of having it in the right line, that's all. It would have made a mess if it had hit anything. Probably about a 1,000 tonnes in the unit, I'd say. 20 years ago, Doug Hislop saved the Tangaluma Flyer and its passengers during a cyclone. He knows about floods on this river too. Yeah, I was up river in 74. We were up there for a few days. We had oh, about 10 barges up there at the time. 
Once past the bridges, there were cruising paddle boats that had been taken out of the city to get away from the danger, only to find even more peril at the mouth of the river. Here, the Mavis was joined by the much bigger Murrumbidgee. It's got rotatable engines, seven times the power, but its skipper says Doug did all the hard work. I think all that credit should go to the uh, skipper of the Mavis. Um, he uh, did a pretty good job. Um, he's operating a little tug, um, has a big, plenty of power very easy to manoeuvre where he would have had to done a lot, of, a, lot, a lot more work. But Doug says the tug deserves the praise. Mavis, the old iron horse, this is our oldest and best boat. It's a 40 year old, that boat. I think everybody thinks uh, the little tug that could this morning uh, did a remarkable effort, made a remarkable effort. Uh, there's no doubt that, uh, in my mind, that uh, the tug driver saved lives. Concerns about the Mogul Ferry and Island Party Boat have eased, but smaller boats are still coming to grief. <laughs> The section of river walks has been towed to Nudgee Beach near Brisbane Airport. Currents have made this one of Mother Nature's dumping grounds. There's even more debris at Luggage Point, thousands of pieces of people's lives from upstream. Already there's been scavenging, police call it looting. These men were warned, but three others have already been charged. Jeff Bruch, 7 News. Brisbane's central business district has been paralysed by the floods, left a virtual ghost town today. Public transport's been cancelled and roads cut. Now a burst water main added to emergency service problems. In the pre-dawn gloom, a city alarm sounds a forlorn warning. The high tide and its flood peak are just minutes away. This wasn't even his place. I love Brisbane, so I'll thought I'd do it, I've got nothing else to do, so why not? Others couldn't hold back the tide. At the old festival hall, a gaggle of onlookers gathered to catch the only show in town, one everyone hopes doesn't have an encore. I, I think we've all been concerned, our basements are flooded. All transport had come to a halt, inner city arterial roads were cut. It's quite eerie here in the city. It's five o'clock in the morning at the corner of Charlotte and Albert Streets. And this area would normally be waking up to another working day. People coming in, cars driving around. Instead, these intersections are awash with flood water. In the end, the river stayed 900 millimetres below the 1974 level. But within minutes, there was more bad news. On William Street, a burst water main threatened to undermine the roadway. Authorities were forced to shut down yet another major thoroughfare. The cauldron, more suitable for swimming than state of origin grudge matches, and water had definitely stopped play at the tennis. It'll be a nervous few days for the curators of precious displays at Goma and the State Library. This afternoon, a massive hole in the ground for the Vision Tower development had filled with water. There are concerns about its stability. The council officers looking at that this afternoon to, to make sure that the adjoining streets uh, don't, uh, are, well, aren't compromised. With the death toll rising, the enormity of this disaster is becoming ever clearer. As we weep for what we have lost, and as we grieve for family and friends, and we confront the challenge that is before us, I want us to remember who we are. We are Queenslanders. We're the people that they breed tough north of the border. We're the ones that they knock down and we get up again. Patrick Condry, Seven News. Well, the path of destruction from this flood stretches through some of South East Queensland's most recognisable areas. The wall of water wound its way through Mogul before swamping low-lying areas of Ipswich, leaving Goodna inundated. Suburbs including Wakehole and Dara went under before the flood swept through more of Brisbane's west. Mount Omni and Jindalee were hard hit, as was a stretch housing some of the city's most expensive homes, Chelmer, Indrapilly and Tennessee. As in 1974, some of the worst damage occurred in Rock Lee, with entire streets going under. Archerfield, Fairfield and St Lucia were battered before the floodwaters hit Brisbane CBD. Suburbs including West End, Milton, Tenerife and Holland Park suffered terribly, as did Newstead, Albion and Hamilton. 
portside areas of Hemant and Penkenbar were also swamped as this huge volume of water slowly makes its way into Moreton Bay. Well, it's been a soul-destroying day for tens of thousands of Brisbane residents as floodwaters swamp properties across the city. But there was also relief for many locals when the levels peaked just centimetres from their homes. At daybreak, the scale of Brisbane's flood crisis dawned on inner city residents as houses were engulfed and the only way to get around some neighbourhoods was to float. Until you're out here, you don't really appreciate just how much damage it's done. Locals were left stunned across Milton, Paddington and Orkinflower as houses were flooded and possessions destroyed where people had been forced to flee. Pretty nervous time, just watching it come up. Depending on where they lived, residents were left devastated or counting their blessings. Anthony Fuge was sure his Paddington home would go under. At midday yesterday, with, we, we, with the reports and everything, we, we thought it was going to be over the roof and, and we thought we'd have a bulldozer in here. Images and stories which will be told for generations to come. My daughter wants to know why the clouds are so angry. No through roads have taken on a whole new meaning. Landmarks are now unrecognisable. This was how the former Milton Tennis Courts property looked at 7am. The water here about six metres deep. They cruised up Milton Road and were gobsmacked by what they saw. It's very touching, very, very touching. Sam Raganese has lived close to Rosalie Village for 39 years. Despite all efforts, businesses couldn't be saved from inundation. Still, Sam says it'll take a lot more to break residents around here. I think they're holding up pretty good. They've got a lot of help. There's been a lot of help from everywhere. Of course, the cleanup after this is going to take months and months. But residents say the same community spirit that helped them prepare for these floods will get them through the heartbreaking mop up. Some property owners will have to muster all their strength. The floating drift restaurant at Milton may now be beyond saving. Across the river, residents in Chilmer and Graceful will also need fighting spirit. Look, it's a dramatic impact on this city and that's why I have to say that it's going to be a very big job to fix things up. It's a shocking sight. Oxley Road inundated, homes and streets have vanished. Thousands of residents like Warren Floyd had a terrible wait before they could see just how much damage had been done. Like so many others, his home is a soggy mess. We've got to count ourselves lucky when you see what other people have gone through. Dozens of Queensland surfers Life-saving crews spent the day ferrying stranded people to safety. Others were determined to wait it out at home. It could be weeks before their properties dry out and are ready to clean. We're in contact with a few people who are sitting in houses at the moment who are probably having a quiet beer because there's nothing you can do for a couple of days. At evacuation centres, they're trying to pass the time as best they can. 1,000 beds were filled overnight. Authorities expect more to come as flood victims get over the shock and the recovery begins. Amazing, you never see this again. We can only hope. Kim Scubris, Seven News. Indeed, and for some homeowners in the flood zone, just metres proved the difference between heartache and joy. In one Yoronga Street, homes were swamped while neighbouring properties were left untouched. Suburbs in Brisbane's south and west, underwater, it's overwhelming. Never seen water, this amount of water anywhere, so it's, uh, it's pretty scary, really. The mighty Brisbane River consumed everything in its path. There's so much damage, so much heartache. Like many others, Peter Mallon and his son returned to find their Yuronga home full of water. They moved their furniture and possessions up high, not high enough. Suddenly had a little cry yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So that was tough. It was tough. Mm. <laughs> yeah. In 1974, Bruce Douglas rode through flood water to see the damage to his house. 37 years later, a different boat, a different home, but the same result. The kitchen's gone, it's the all swelled and stuffed. Other homes in the same street were spared. Somehow Bruce hasn't lost his sense of humour. Just watch out for the crocodile, will you? <laughs> no crocodiles, but... <laughs> oh, well, holy shit. Yeah. Snake. 
The Centenary Highway, the main link from the city to the western suburbs, is severed. There's no cars, only canoes. At Jindalee, the bridge is cut. Homes and streets are flooded around Oxley. But Rock Lee is the worst. Machinery, trucks, businesses and the iconic markets have gone under. Farmers forced to move their produce to the Sunshine Coast. It just means there's an avenue now to get rid of it. The river is receding, revealing hidden dangers. The only way to get around parts of Rockley is by boat, and even then, it's hard to navigate. There's so much debris in the water. Pallets, drums and even cars have been swept away from the industrial area. Some people in some parts of Brisbane have already started the clean-up. Despite their own problems, they're pitching in to help mates. That friendship and community spirit will help pull everyone through. Carly Waters, 7 News. Well, sadly, many flood victims have been through this all before. They're reliving the pain of the 1974 flood all over again. Talitha Cummins joins us now again live from Fairfield and is with one of those people. Thanks, Kay. I'm here with Lana Andrews tonight. Lana, you've been through this before. Did you ever imagine this could happen twice in your lifetime? Not really, because the Wyvernhoe Dam was built up the 74 floods and it went up to our ceiling. And I thought, well, if never, another one ever did come, that we wouldn't get it as bad. But I never expected really to happen in a lifetime. And we were in Adelaide when it happened. And my neighbour rang me and said, I think you should get home in a hurry. So we've come home and it's not quite as bad, but we have lost everything. And what we'll do is we'll just hose down, brush ourselves off and start again. We don't have a choice. How, how did you feel when you walked inside the door today? A little bit shocked, um, a little bit sick in the stomach, but that's only just nerves and just a normal reaction, I think. But um, the mud and because we've got the sewage plant not so far away, it's the same thing as happened as last time, exactly the same thing. Sewage comes through, river comes up, gully comes up, they meet together and that's it. But I think we'll, we'll just, we'll just, what we'll do, we'll hose everything down, see what comes up. If it's anything salvageable, we'll keep it. If not, it goes in the bin. Wash up the clothes. Same treatment as we've done before. Thank you very much. We wish you all the best with your treatment, Thank with you your clean up. Thank you. And back to you, Kay. We certainly do wish her all the best. Thank you, Talitha. Well, now around 1,000 people remain in the evacuation centres around Brisbane. Now, reporter Pippa Gardner joins us from the evacuation centre at the RNA showgrounds. And Pippa, I believe uh, the Prime Minister is there. Yes, Prime Minister Julia Gillard joins me now. Anna Bly has described this crisis as post-war reconstruction. Well, I think what the Premier is saying is that there's going to be a lot of work to do for months and months and months ahead. And so now, now is the time to stand in these days with Queensland when people are in evacuation centres and you can see the dramatic flood water going by. But we will also need to be standing with Queensland in the months and months and months ahead. There's going to be a lot of things to be rebuilt. Yeah, people need homes, they need food, they, they need shelter. What will the federal government be doing? Obviously we'll, we'll need help from uh, right around the country. But we're working with people already. Uh, this is the uh, fourth evacuation centre I've been in today. I was actually in this centre yesterday talking to people who are in really difficult circumstances. And I'd have to say Kids Corner has kicked on since yesterday. They're doing a fantastic job. But we are already working. Our Australian Defence Force is out there assisting with search and rescue, getting supplies around. People need food, they need water, they need it in locations that are isolated. So our Defence Force is doing that. That. They're helping with water purification. They've been helping with the things floating down the Brisbane River. And we're making available emergency payments to get dollars in the pockets of people that you see here. We are having thousands and thousands of people uh, looking for emergency payments. We've already paid out more than $24 million. That's just a start. Prime Minister Julia Gillard, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Prime Minister.